Hello and welcome everyone. So yeah, I'll be explaining the problem B, MEXN array of uh, Code Forces Global Round 19. Quite interesting problem. Uh, yeah. Um, so like the problem actually first describes about an operations that we can do in a specific uh, segment. Let's say that we have some segment of from B1 till BK and we want to apply an operation to this segment and that operation would be I could make any partition as I want and after making those par partitions I uh, the like cost of those part partition would uh, would denote as something like the number of partitions that I've made plus the summations of those partitions MEX value. Now, what is MEX? That is called minimum excluded, meaning the smallest non-negative integer that does not occur in, inside, the, inside the set itself. So if I like derive that here, forget about this thing. I'll explain what is going on uh, later, but like what what we actually have to do like let's imagine as I've told you let's imagine we have an array B of some integers let's say X Y Z blah 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 okay now what they're talking about is the cost of partitions what I can do is I can make some groups of uh, some subgroups you could call some subgroups like that and the cost of those partitions would be the number of those as, as uh, let's assume that we've created three subgroups from this array B so that would seem something like as there are like we've created three partitions so three plus summation of all the MEXs all the subgroups MEX as you can see there are three subgroups so these three subgroups MEX will be added here. That's it. Now what it what is MEX? The, uh, the smallest non-negative integer that is not being included inside the set. Now, if I give an example for that too, let's say we have zero two in a set. Now what is the smallest non-negative integer that is not here? Of course one. Similarly, zero and one. What is not smallest non-negative integer that is not included? So the MEX would be 2. That's how MEX actually works, okay? Now, yeah, that's the operation that they've described. Now, then they've called that, okay, now assume that you have an integer, uh, integer n, and you're going to be given an array. Now, what you have to do inside this array is that you have to, like, print the minimum oh sorry uh, not here uh, yeah from the B yeah what you have to do here is like you're gonna be given an array a of size n now of uh, from this array first of all you're gonna find you are asked to find all the possible sub arrays that you can make and from those sub arrays you will try to figure out the cost of permutation of each and every sub arrays listen to me carefully each and every sub arrays meaning each I'm gonna denote each and every sub array as some particular array like B now out of those arrays I have to make out of those arrays meaning there there will eventually be the sub array of the array a that we're given and out of those sub arrays, we have to find out the cost of partition of those sub arrays and then sum them, add them all together, and I'll put the answer. As simple as that. Okay? So, as, uh, as they've described here in the like, in the bottom here. Uh, if you take a look at the second test case 201 now what are the possible sub arrays that I can make from 201 
one would be two, two zero, two zero one, then zero, zero one, and one. So these are the possible subarrays that I can make now. If for every subarray, I have to, I have to find out what is the cost of a partition. Now they've already they've also told that you have to make and you have to find out the maximum cost of partition the maximum so that's the key how to find uh, how do we find out the maximum cost of partition because the sub arrays that they've that you're going to create you could easily do that using brute force manner because n is quite small so the main key uh, the main key factor in this problem would be to find out how we can find out the maximum possible cost of partition of a any subarray that's the main goal because at, at the end of the day you can easily create for every subarray uh, in a brute force manner and for every subarray you if you manage to find out how to make the maximum possible uh, cost of that subarray partition cost of that sub subarray maximum possible then the answer is just add those things and finally output the answer now the bottom line is how do we find out the maximum possible partition of a sub array now now we could look into this uh, problem uh, or like this uh, this topic here in two different ways the first way would be how do we like how do we like maximize these partition what could be the possible ways now one way to look into this would be okay if I could try to find out the maximum mex of some part of that sub array let's imagine that our sub array was 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay and you might think that okay now I could partition this sub array like this let's assume that it's, it's an array uh, now just assume that it's an array now we're, we're trying to find out the maximum possible partition cost now you might think that okay I can make several teams or several subgroups I can think about it in we can think about it in two ways first of all what if we maximize the MEX and run our operations or what if we increase the amount of groups right increase the amount of partitions as you can see here the number is 0 1 2 3 4 5 if we make an mex operation out of this we we get an mex of 6 which is quite a lot number right now we could m try to maximize using the bigger mex trying to figure out how we can take only that partition which actually manages to give us a bigger MEX and the other way to think about it is the other way to think about it is that what if we try to maximize the number of partitions maximize to to maximize the number of subgroups out of this group meaning I could even think about this uh, whole array as five possible like six possible group I could divide it into six possible partitions here I have only made one partition here I have only made six partition think about it what I'm actually doing now now here's the fun part here I've made one partition but I've got my mex as equal to six but if you take a look at this part I've actually managed to create six different partitions and the result would what now we're gonna compare the results that's that's really interesting here uh, because now if you look at if we perform the operations by making the choice of creating only one partition like that that would result as hope yeah we have one partition so one plus 
the sum of the partitions that sum of the mex of the partition now we only have one partition what is the mex six so six plus one would give us seven yes so for this particular uh, combination we are getting an answer of our cost of uh, cost of partition as equal to seven what if we go and manage to think about when uh, think about it like that what what if we uh, what uh, let's just check what's the result gonna give us if we create six different partitions now for for the first one we have zero okay let's think about it how many how many partitions that we created here one two three four five six okay let's say six plus okay six plus now what so this is my first partition what's the mex going to give me if we only have zero of course one the lowest non-negative integer what's the mex of one going to give me zero okay one plus zero plus what's this going to give me of course zero because it's two only two left we have zero or non-negative integer and plus zero and plus zero and so on and so forth surprisingly and like if you just observe here we are getting the same value as this 7 equal to 7 meaning it doesn't even matter how you partition these things if you manage to just think about it in terms of creating uh, the partition of each member like only one member of partition it's gonna always give us the same result of regardless of how uh, like look, uh, regardless of which way you make the partitions it's gonna always give us the the maximum answer as this as uh, as I'm clearly showing you that both both of the different combinations give us the same result but they are being calculated differently although they give us the same result which means we don't have to do anything just create this the number of sub arrays uh, the possible sub arrays out of the array a and for each and every sub array just uh, try we're just gonna try to make the operation how many like for each and every sub array uh, we we're gonna go with this combination that will be pretty much easier for us to calculate rather than going for this because uh, at, at the end of the day both of these are giving me the same answer so why not going for a much more concise and easier way to implement okay that will be more, much more convenient for us now let's take a look at the code section shall we okay. Okay. there you go code is really super duper easy taking the arrays and here I'm actually creating all the possible sub arrays and this is the length of that particular sub array of the array A. Now as we're told that we have to add for each and every sub array the cost of the partition. Yeah, we did and we did it like that. Exactly. If the here some plus equal to two meaning uh, meaning that one would actually yeah the result plus equal to 2 is actually meaning that if the okay if we have only one partition now as there is one partition for add 1 and 0 the mex is 1 so 1 plus 1 would be 2 that's why it's actually giving us if we like calculate that individually then we could just think think it like that okay I'll show you again what I'm actually saying right now let's say 0 1 2 3 we could also calculate like that okay we have one we're, we are considering this as only one partition so like as one available so plus mex would be one similarly for that one partition we're considering what is the mex gonna be zero 
1 plus 0. Similarly, 1 plus 0. Now, if you can size it, if you take some common, you could say that it's the same as like comparing 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times, sorry, 4 plus uh, 1 plus uh, okay uh, that doesn't actually matter uh, you can you can easily just calculate for each and every partition like that okay that will be uh, pretty much easy for you to implement but that's why uh, that's exactly what we did here did did here uh, yeah Okay, so you could do that, you could do it like that, or maybe you could think about it like that. Okay, one, two, three, four. So we have four, permuta uh, four partitions that we made. Time, uh, plus, plus, um, okay, was it plus or, yeah. Plus uh, the, the MEXs. Uh, yeah, the MEXs like that. 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 meaning ultimately it's going to give us give us 5 as you can see here it is also 5 1 plus 1 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 yeah same result so yeah that's how you you, you could solve this problem easily yeah so i hope i could make you under uh, did make you understand uh if you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, till next time. Goodbye.